Now, this is where the critical update comes, because as you can imagine, that didn't sit too well with the ATF. We are the Armed Attorneys. Today, we're providing a critical update on the final rule on frames and receivers and what it means for you. And essentially, we're getting to answer that question, at what point does a block of raw material become a firearm? But before we begin, share your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And today's video is brought to you by our friends over at Sonoran Desert Institute. Are you interested in getting involved in the firearms community? Check them out at sdi.edu slash armed hyphen attorneys and take your hobby to the next level. Now, until recently, the federal government through the ATF drew a distinction between unfinished frames and receiver blanks which they just kind of chalked up to being finished and unfinished. We in the industry called these 80% lowers. Now, that's not a term that the ATF used. They just kind of make the distinction of finished, which uh, that'd be a firearm that is regulated by the Gun Control Act, and unfinished frames of receivers, which were unregulated. And now, why this is important? Well, if something's not a firearm, then, hey, I could have this ship theoretically directly to my house. Um, if I'm a hobbyist, I could build my own firearm. No problem. Now, this is where the major policy shift came and where the courts get involved, and that's what we're going to talk about today. On August the 24th, 2022, the ATF published Final Rule 2021R-05F on frames and receivers, and that's when that went into effect. And essentially what they did is they treated these unfinished gun kits, you know, these 80% kits or what we would typically say is unfinished firearms, they started treating these as completed firearms. Therefore, they would need to go through federal firearms licensed dealers. FFLs in order to facilitate a background check in order to make the transfer take place. So what did this look like before the rule? I wanted an 80% kit. I'd go purchase it online, get it delivered to my house, and I could build my homemade firearm. We as Americans have had that right since the beginning of time. Now, this rule would effectively say, hey, this little kit, uh, this is a completed firearm. We cannot ship it directly to your house. You have to go through a federal firearms license dealer because we're going to be changing the definition of firearm located in 27 CFR section 478.11. Now, when they changed this definition, like I said, that had the effect of saying these are completed firearms and you have to go through a background check in order to uh, comply with the new final rule. Now, for the most part, this affected um, manufacturers, people who made these kits and gun stores. You know, gun stores could sell these things on the shelves. They wouldn't need a background check, but it had the impact of impacting hobbyists because, hey, we can't have access to the tools or the materials that we need in order to build homemade firearms. Now, there was a challenge to this, this change in the definition, and let's just go over that definition now. So in that final rule, they changed the definition of firearm to include a weapon, parts kit that is designed or maybe readily completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. Now, that didn't sit right with virtually anybody in the firearms community because it didn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I heard all kinds of analogies like if you go to Home Depot, does Home Depot need to get a federal firearms license now for selling hunks of metal? Because, you know, it, everything in the eyes of the ATF is a firearm just waiting to happen. So on June the 30th, 2023, a federal district court judge granted a summary judgment motion in Vanderstock v. Garland, vacating the ATF's frames and receivers rules from going into effect and basically preventing them from enforcing it. Now, this is where the critical update comes, because as you can imagine, that didn't sit too well with the ATF. The case was appealed to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, who granted an emergency review of the case. If you want to check that out, that's Vanderstock v. Garland. It's case number 23-10718. And essentially, the court said, because the ATF has not demonstrated a strong likelihood of success on the merits, nor irreparable harm in the absence of the stay, they deny the government's request for a stay in that case. So the court originally vacated the final rule from going into effect. The ATF appealed it, and the Fifth Circuit has agreed with the lower court saying, yes, this rule needs to be, basically, we need to maintain the status quo while this case is litigated, and they do not see the ATF succeeding on the merits of this case. Now, this is a big win for gun owners for a couple of different reasons. The primary one of which, this is an example of one of those cases where we see the ATF redefining a term that Congress has expressly provided for. You know, the Congress provides us definitions in the United States Code. And when the ATF comes around behind the Congress and says, hey, we're going to amend the Code of Federal Regulations and change this definition that you duly elected representatives have come up with, um, the courts, you know, that's not sitting too well for them 
right now. Now, we've seen a few different challenges on different rules from the ATF challenging. You know, we've heard Chevron deference. We've heard about the EPA major questions doctrine, uh, violations of the Second Amendment. I would say this is one of the more clear examples that we see the ATF redefining something that Congress has said, and the courts are kind of using that as the basis to push pause on things and say, hey, we're going to litigate this and figure out who has the legitimate authority to regulate this stuff. But we wanted to provide that quick update. A lot of people have been talking about the case, but just giving that clear overview of what's going on, where we are now with the courts. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. We always appreciate your questions in the comments section down below. And until next time, we're the Armed Patrols. How awful was that, Jen?